let's take a little look at this uh, old thing that's taken the doing some rounds here on the old Reddit of our Yu-Gi-Oh. Now that we're almost two months into this ban list, I think it's time to reassess the Savage and Baron hits. In which world are we trying to reassess Savage Baron, by the way? That's interesting. Mods, if you want to put a poll up, if you think this is correct or wrong, I'll be curious to poll the, uh, the people here. As we all can see from the past several weeks, the hits to Baron and Fleur did nothing to actually lower the power level of the Snake Eye deck. So, point number one, I will say, I don't think that was ever the intention of banning Baron Savage. I think it was a long time coming change to the game and a hit to just the overall philosophy of boss monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! That was a long time coming that felt like an opportune moment with Snake Eye being so dominant. Those cards really don't need to be in Snake Eye, as we can see from the fact that 25 out of 32 top cut spots in YCS Indianapolis were... Snake Eye decks, and they don't have those boss monsters, but they're cards that are problematic throughout the history of this game since the release. So it just felt like maybe this was the good opportune time to do it. Um, so I don't think they were supposed to specifically be Snake Eye hits. In fact, Fire King Snake Eyes essentially become non-existent. Pure Snake Eyes pivoted to a bunch of Link bosses, like many people said the first days after the ban list was announced. That's not to say Fire King Snake Eyes is a bad deck or anything, by the way. It's absolutely uh, still really good. Um, just Snake Eye Pure is better. Uh, it's just really that simple. To summarize my opinion on Savage and Baron, I don't hate the fact they're generic Omnis, but because I don't believe, nor do I trust Konami Japan, to make great archetype bosses for every single Synchro archetype, considering their history. Well, I suppose this really just comes and boils down to a debate here of what is good and bad boss monster design? Generic enough that every deck can run it? Or... Specific to specific archetypes only. And then further than that, if you do make them specific to specific archetypes, even if you keep them generic as well, actually. So two further points, forks in the road here being created. Do you let them be generic? And do you, do you give them hard Omni negates? Because there's a lot of questions you need to ask yes or no on this flowchart diagram of the decision tree. Not every deck has the gas to do much of anything else. And all that banning Savage and Baron does is eliminate decks from the meta rather than actually make the meta interesting. Um, well, I'll give you my opinion here. Um, I don't think this is true. Well, I think it, it, this is true, but it's, 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 that's not a bad thing. Yeah, by removing Savage Baron, you've kind of deleted a lot of rogue synchro decks boss monsters, but I don't see that as a bad thing at whatsoever at all, because I find them to be quite inherently toxic cards. Um, and very boring as well. Like, I mean, my god, how many times do we need to see Savage being summoned in, uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh before we realize maybe out with the old, in with the new? Um, I've been watching a lot more content than I used to, and something I've heard Josh say a lot in some of his videos is that summoning Ash isn't that interesting. It plays itself, and while I get that it's also a complaint about one-card combos as a whole, it makes sense. In addition, I think what people forget when they're complaining about every Synchro deck playing Baron and the ones that can play Link monsters playing Savage is that how specific decks come to their end board matters. Whether a deck uses its entire extra and has zero follow-up after, or uses like 4-5 to five monsters and has insane follow-up, or certain decks being able to play through certain hand traps and not others, there's a lot that makes those combo decks different, and saying they end on Savage Baron so they're all the same is pretty damn reductive, considering that not every deck makes Savage Baron for the same reasons or the same way. It doesn't matter though, <laughs> like... It's, yeah, it is reductive to say, well, okay, yeah, it's just Baron Savage, but it's fundamentally all you are practically seeing in that scenario is Baron Savage. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you got there by spamming like 20 special summons or by getting there with three special summons. In the end, you're just seeing two big Omni negates um, plus all of the other follow up or searches and resources that archetype has built in the process of getting to, the, to that end board, right? Like, this is just, that's, that's still not interesting, I don't think. Unlike, say, summoning Artifact Dagda to set Artifact Scythe. But, like, functionally, that's the same thing, right? What's the difference between Archetype X or Archetype Y or Archetype Z doing a bunch of crazy wombo combo synchro plays and 10 summons or 20 summons or 35 summons to end on Savage Baron, um, which essentially are trying to hard stop you from playing the game compared to linking into Dagda and sending a... Functionally, that's the same thing, right? 
especially to um, rogue decks, to tier 2 and under decks, you're dealing with basically the same end board, you know? Uh, because Baron Savage, if it, and here's the other thing as well, if you're making Baron Savage, it isn't like just Baron Savage. A lot of these decks that go Baron Savage are also accruing some sort of other win condition in the process, regardless of what that archetype might be, if it's a synchro or not. You know, back in the heyday of uh, synchro spam with Oridon, etc., etc., you even had like Eldlich setting four back row, but also ending on Herald Savage. Herald, quote-unquote, taking the replacement place of Baron in that end board, right? So every tier one deck that has utilized these crazy synchro strategies has been doing the same stuff uh, in the process. It just takes longer. At least Dagda Scythe just ends the game faster. Functionally, you're looking at the same shit. One thing that's even more important than the actual usage scenarios for Savage and Baron is design. OCG makes all of our cards. That's not true. And so the banning of Savage and Baron doesn't work. <laughs> Jerome out here, like, unemployed, according to this guy. Okay. Um, Savage Baron doesn't work unless the OCG also bans them. Because then they'd actually maybe make more synchro bosses. I gotta reread this. The OCG makes all of our cards. So the banning of Savage and Baron doesn't work unless the OCG also bans them because then they'd actually maybe make more synchro bosses. It's one or the other. You can, but you can, they can still make more boss monsters even regardless of Savage and Baron being banned. Why? Like, what do you mean? They, they absolutely can. Uh, that's for a point. Why would the OCG print anti-nib cards if they would assume Baron is in the format? Um, I mean, that brings up a different topic of the arms race between uh, omni generic Omni Negates and hand traps that can deal with those Omni Negates in the first place. Um, I just don't think it's a either-or question here. You know? Um, plus, they are legal in Japan. So, OCG making all of our cards, but then you're also forgetting the fact that the OCG... If you think OCG makes all of our cards and they focus on the OCG meta and the OCG format, well, we, do, we they have Baron Savage, right? And by the way, this also goes like deeper down the rabbit hole if you start bringing Max E into the equation because Max E is legal over there, but it's not here. So are you suggesting that archetypes and boss monsters, et cetera, et cetera, are designed with Max E in mind for them and only them? Do, like, do we just get the dregs? Do we just get the leftovers? Maybe we do. So if we do then none of this even matters because, well, they don't even care in the first place, right? If you want to use this line of logic. You know what I mean? Because if they don't give a shit about our format, then they're going to design around their format anyway, right? So I don't, I don't feel like this is a valid point. Um, I don't believe the ban is necessary, but for those who believe that banning Savage Baron would lead to better design of bosses, unfortunately, that isn't the case. If the OCG bans these two cards in July list, then I will throw my hands up. Otherwise, all this does is cripple decks that the OCG designs around having access to these powerful monsters. My two cents, but what do you... Well, I mean, you could also argue, argue the same line of thought with Maxi as I've just, uh, as I've just uh, explained here. That's the point. What is the point? That they don't design around TCG? Okay, well, they're not designing around TCG anyway because Maxi is legal. That's the counterpoint. Are you understanding? This is my two cents, but what do y'all think? I think Konami of America did one of their money hits like they usually do, but I'd love to hear everyone's opinions on these cards and the fact that they're bad. How is... Like, I, I like to be cynical about Konami a lot of the time because in the end, like, that is just the correct take. Like, a business is going to maximize their profits, and that's really what the ban list does in the end, but... Savage Baron... How are they money hits? Because you're still gonna play Snake Eye, you know? I don't know. <clears throat> so what is really the conclusion that you've arrived at here? Because you haven't really um, gotten to a resultant decision of what this is. Like, So it, it seems what I'm gathering is that this person is upset that Savage Baron is banned. And he wants them to come back because they act as good boss monsters for, um, for uh, generic decks that aren't um, the top tier meta Snake Eye decks. Uh, but fundamentally, I don't think they've really toyed with the idea that it's a good or bad thing. They've kind of discussed it here while saying like, um, there's a lot that makes these combo decks different and saying the end on Savage and Baron is all the same is reductive because not every deck makes Savage and Baron for the same reasons or the same way. Unlike say summoning Dagda, well, first sec first of all, I, I disagree. I think these are definitely uh, functionally the same thing. 
Um, but second of all, Baron Savage, be like, just ask yourself really when it comes down to this, is the game better with Baron and Savage? Yes or no? Is, is, is Yu-Gi-Oh better with Baron and Savage? I don't think so. You know? Um, anyway, the verdict is uh, mostly disagree here. <laughs> Which is um, completely unsurprising. Here's the thing. If you're going to make like Baron Savage part of the metagame, then they basically have to stay here forever, don't they? Right? Because if, if you make... In the same way that Maxi exists in OCG, right? Because they've essentially designed their game into a, into, a, into a corner where, like, at this point, Maxi just has to stay around forever in OCG because they design and build and create things around it. Um, so ultimately, I think that whole mentality needs to be dragged down and re reshift and reposition that. Um, and re rethink the whole concept of uh, hand traps. So maybe they'd have to do the same thing with, uh, with boss monsters, which they are kind of doing, at least in TCG, uh, by banning Savage Baron. Um, anyway, it's a discussion that's probably going to be had for a few more months and maybe even years from now as we look back and think the turning point of Yu-Gi-Oh being, uh, at least in the TCG, was the banning of Savage and Baron when it comes to boss monsters and end boards. Uh, in terms of end boards, I mean, I don't think crazy end boards are going away. Mascarena still exists. Apollosa still exists. Um, in terms of synchro strategies, yeah, maybe not hard Omni Negates exist, but people have found ways to do things with uh, shooting Riser in the past, sending Snow, for example. Like, we, we will come up with new things that evade the ban list or get circumvent these things in the future. We got Fiendsmith coming, which is going to send a bunch of bullshit. Um... In the future, I, so I, I don't even think like fundamentally Savage Baron actually really do anything in, in, in the grand scheme of things because they will just remake them in some shape or form at some point. But anyway, um, that's the discussion. It's interesting. Shout outs to uh, Red Boss Man here, who's at least tried to bring up some good points and has uh, articulated it in a, fa in a fairly uh, decent way. No, it's, it's not the typical brain rot you see on Reddit, admittedly.